St. Patrick, the Enlightener of Ireland, was born around 385, the son of Calpurnius, a Roman decurion who was responsible for collecting taxes. He lived in the village of Banavum Tabernae, which may have been located at the mouth of the Severn River in Wales. The district was raided by pirates when Patrick was sixteen, and he was one of those taken captive. He was brought to Ireland and sold as a slave, and was put to work as a herder of swine on a mountain identified with Slemish in County Antrim. During his period of slavery, Patrick acquired a proficiency in the Irish language, which was very useful to him in his later missions. He prayed during his solitude on the mountain, and lived this way for six years. He had two visions. The first told him he would return to his home. The second told him his ship was ready. Setting off on foot, Patrick walked two hundred miles to the coast. There he succeeded in boarding a ship and returned to his parents in Britain. Some time later he went to Gaul and studied for the priesthood at Auxerre under St. Germanus. Eventually he was consecrated as a bishop and was entrusted with the mission to Ireland, succeeding St. Palladius. St. Palladius did not achieve much success in Ireland. After about a year he went to Scotland where he died in 432. Patrick had a dream in which an angel came to him, bearing many letters. Selecting one inscribed, The Voice of the Irish, he heard the Irish entreating him to come back to them. Although St. Patrick achieved remarkable results in spreading the gospel, he was not the first or only missionary to Ireland. He arrived around 432, about a year after St. Palladius began his mission to Ireland. There were also other missionaries who were active on the southeast coast, but it was St. Patrick who had the greatest influence and success in preaching the gospel. Therefore, he is known as the Enlightener of Ireland. His autobiographical confession tells of the many trials and disappointments he endured. Patrick had once confided to a friend that he was troubled by a certain sin he had committed before he was fifteen years old. The friend assured him of God's mercy and even supported Patrick's nomination as bishop. Later, he turned against him and revealed what Patrick had told him in an attempt to prevent his consecration. Many years later, Patrick still grieved for his dear friend, who had publicly shamed him. St. Patrick founded many churches and monasteries across Ireland, but the conversion of the Irish people was no easy task. There was much hostility, and he was assaulted several times. He faced danger and insults and was reproached for being a foreigner and a former slave. There was also a very real possibility that the pagans would try to kill him. Despite many obstacles, he remained faithful to his calling, and he baptized many people into Christ. The saint's epistle to Caroticus is an authentic work. In it, he denounces the attack of Caroticus's men on one of his congregations. In his writings, we can see St. Patrick's awareness that he has been called by God, as well as his determination and modesty in undertaking his missionary work. He refers to himself as a sinner, the most ignorant and of least account, and as someone who was despised by many. He ascribes his success to God rather than to his own talents. I owe it to God's grace that through me so many people should be born again to him. By the time he established his Episcopal See in Armagh in 444, St. Patrick had other bishops to assist him, many native priests and deacons, and he encouraged the growth of monasticism. St. Patrick is often depicted holding a shamrock, or with snakes fleeing from him. He used the shamrock to illustrate the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. Its three leaves growing out of a single stem helped him to explain the concept of one God in three persons. St. Patrick died on March 17, 461, although some say it was as late as 492. There are various accounts of his last days, but they are mostly legendary. No one knows for certain where St. Patrick was buried. St. Columba of Iona says that the Holy Spirit revealed to him that Patrick was buried in Saul, the site of his first church. A granite slab was placed at his traditional gravesite in Downpatrick in 1899.